from an artist in the south of France, April 2021. Thoughts from the Riverbank. Post number two, Rivers and Bridges. Hi there. I'm glad you could join me for the second of these posts from an artist in the south of France. My name is Jessica Langton and I live in the centre of the south or Midi on the Bay of the Golfe du Lyon so named for the dangers of those waters for mariners over the ages, or for its seawater lagoons, home of flamingos and the wild white Camargue horses. I have lived both in Provence and in the Languedoc, and where I live now is a place sort of sandwiched between these two historical regions, on the most eastern edge of the newly named L'Occitanie, which now stretches from Biarritz on the Atlantic coast to the River Rhone at Avignon. L'Occitanie is named for the historical Pays d'Oc, which stretched from northern Italy to northern Spain and had its own language, the Longue d'Oc. I wrote my ideas for these first posts, walking along the dikes on the banks of my local river, the River Vidol between the two bridges of Marciag and saint laurent des gouze The river Vidoul flows from the northern, mountainous and sparsely inhabited areas of the département of the Gare to its southern tip of salt marshes, bird sanctuaries and wild empty beaches along the coast. This north-south axis of Grande Nature, or the great outdoors or wilderness, is crossed by a human east-west axis created by the migration of European peoples throughout history across the southernmost lands of France. The Vidal's source is in the Cévennes hills from which a wandering path brings it to the edge of the fenlands of the Camargue just alongside my village here. Eventually it will flow into the salt lakes down by the sea at the Creux du Roi. A river determines the course of human history, its settlements, agriculture, invasion and trade. By my village, traces of a traveller's staging post dating back to 300 BC were discovered, but the Romans renovated and built up this resting post extensively from about 150 BC. They were constructing the Via Domitia, their main east-west highway, connecting Rome to the Empire's Spanish territories and facilitating their governance of Gaul. They built a bridge, the Pont d'Ambois, whose arches have washed away over the years in the tempests and floods of autumn. They built viaducts, roads, bridges, arenas, and the buildings remain here today to be seen. The Romans left our landscape scored with the traces of a highly evolved and evolving society. They built their hostels and farriers' workshops around here, which later, during the Middle Ages, evolved into rest stops for pilgrims walking the Camino de Santiago. My daily walks out behind the village also take me through old stone quarries, like so many around here, first mined for constructing the Via Domitia, the Pont d'Ambois, la Maison Romaine, the Arena in Nîmes, and of course the Pont du Gard. They are the architectural souvenirs of the great endeavour made to move, to advance and to connect. These famous Roman sites are well worth a visit if you're in the area, usually open for visits, but check for the latest information, of course. There are now two beautiful new museums to visit, one in Arles and one in Nîmes, displaying Roman artefacts recovered in archaeological digs in the region. In the old, disused quarries of the hinterlands where I walk, the tracks of carts bearing heavy loads are still visibly worn into the surface of large flat rocks, hidden in the scrub oak copses or the woods of the parasol pine. Today, just south of the Roman bridge, the high-speed train track carves a sharp swathe across and above the vines as it rises towards its own new bridge over the Vidoule. The land is crisscrossed over time and throughout history like this, 
with all the various threads of connection, construction and communication, weaving a finer and finer but very complex canvas. The Romans brought structures for irrigation, new forms of viticulture, which allowed for a new development of the vines in the Languedoc. From the early wheat crops for daily bread grown in the Vidal's wheat fields to plantations of vines in the 18th century, irrigation and water sources remained a complex and conflictual issue. Marcel Pagnol's novels, L'eau des Collines, recount great romantic tales founded on the importance and scarcity of water sources in southern French agriculture at the turn of the 20th century. One hundred years later, the region's population is growing and agriculture's inexorable need to produce enough for us all to eat and without damaging the environment is a newly formulated and demanding challenge. So seen as a source of life, water is perhaps a more powerful symbol for us than ever. Globally, we are told it is scarcer, more valuable, a vital resource under threat. We take more care, become more aware. We are more frugal, or perhaps we are even more lavish in its consumption. But a river is a symbol of continuation and progress. The river is a source of life, and it can be a metaphor for life. Watching the famously temperamental waters of the Vidor gradually seep away into cracked oaken mud in summer drought, or watching the violent cascades crash over the new dikes, flooding housing villages, creating chaos in autumn, I sense its uncontrollable nature, its natural power. But walking along the new dikes in glorious sunshine today, the river is flowing in a deep teal colour by my side, a symbol of the endless flow, of the continuity, of the progress forward to an inevitable merger with the Mediterranean Sea. The river water is cleaner and better protected than it has been for many years. The fish are jumping. Somehow, in all the changes over all the centuries to today, the river Vidal remains elusive and wild and a constant source of artistic inspiration for painters. The Département of the Gare and of the Ero still offer untamed romantic wildernesses we can wander into and around. There are a number of people offering holidays for painters wanting to paint the great outdoors in the classic French tradition in my area. Personally, I still love to walk and take hundreds of photographs on my phone and my camera. I can spend a day trailing the path of the Vidal, taking photographs and the impressions I get, the colours and the forms I see, seem then to re-emerge over time in a multitude of ways in my artwork, in my studio. In my next post, I will be talking a bit about how the Impressionist movement grew at a time of evolving technologies. And we can't stop the forward progress of life. So I hope you will join me then. More thoughts from the riverbank coming soon. Hope to see you next time. And please don't hesitate to contact me with questions or feedback via my website www.jessicalangton.com